Bob, we have this anecdotal feeling that sleep can enhance our creativity or problem solving. Is there any legitimacy to that? So the question of creativity and sleep is probably the most fascinating question in the whole area of sleep. We, we, know, that it, we know that it happens. There's at least four Nobel laureates uh, who say that the idea for their discovery came in a dream. The periodic chart came out of a dream. The ring structure of the benzene molecule, the first organic mm -hmm. chemical that was actually a, a ring, um, the, 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 the scientist actually had a dream of a snake swallowing its tail. The chemical transmission at the synapse came, came out of a dream. So there are all these instances. John Lennon came up with uh, lyrics for songs in, in dreams. The, the rubiat of Omar Khayyam is supposed to come out of a dream. So we know anecdotally of these amazing examples, but, but it's also more common than that because we all know this phenomenon of sleeping on a problem. When you sleep on a problem, basically you have a jumble of information in your mind and you don't know how to put it together. You don't sleep on a problem when you can't remember a phone number. You sleep on a problem when you can't decide whether to take this high paying job that's kind of boring or this not so well paying job that's more interesting and you don't know how to balance things and weigh things. For that, it's amazingly effective and now in the last few years, we've had studies uh, really since about 2005 showing this creative process at work. So Jan Born, who's in Germany, taught students how to perform a complicated mathematical problem by a tedious rote method. And it turns out that there's actually an easier way to do it. And he didn't tell them that. And so he would train them up and have them do about 100 of these problems and then send them away for 12 hours, bring them back and have them do more. And if he trained them in the morning and brought them back that evening with no sleep in between, about a quarter of the subjects would discover that shortcut. But if they get a chance to sleep overnight in between, if they get to sleep on this problem and they don't even know that there's a problem to solve, all of a sudden, 65% of them, two and a half times as many people, will discover this insight into an easier way to solve these mathematical problems than if they had been awake during the same time. So the brain is, the brain is taking what we've learned during the day and trying to make sense out of it, to figure out how it all fits together. Sarah Mednick out at University of California, San Diego, uh, had subjects do this, this, this problem where they're given three words that don't seem to fit together, but there's some fourth word that ties them all together. And she showed that if you give them a bunch of these, they can figure out about a third of them, and the other two thirds, they just can't figure it out. If you test them again three hours later on the ones they couldn't figure out, and they've had a nap in between, then they're amazingly better. At, now, now they can figure it out. And in fact, how many they figure out when you test them depends on how much of the rapid eye movement, the REM sleep, they get during that nap. So it looks maybe that it's not just sleep that's involved in the creative process, but REM sleep particularly, which is fascinating because that's where we do most of our intense dreaming. And our intense dreams are all about taking bits from our actual life and putting them together in weird, unexpected ways. Not totally crazy ways. They always make a little bit of sense. And it's almost as if you're watching the brain say, how can we fit these things together? Do these things fit together? How do we take what, what my wife said to me in the morning with what my coworker said to me in the afternoon they seem to be giving me the same message, but I'm not quite sure what it is. How does it fit together? And so I have a dream where I'm married to my coworker or where my wife is working in the lab. And it feels kind of crazy, but I think what we're doing is we're watching the brain try to carry out those creative processes, trying to see how things fit together. You know, after September 11th, everybody was walking around saying they didn't understand what happened. Well, they understood what happened. Large plane, large building. What's to understand? Well, what's to understand is I work in a 12-story building. Should I go to work tomorrow? I've got plane tickets to Amsterdam in two weeks. Should I cancel them? I'm going down into the subway in Boston, and there's a guy in front of me with a big backpack. Should I turn around and, and run? 
the question isn't what happened. The question is how do I take that information and understand how to use that going forward in my life? And I think that's what sleep does. I think sleep takes the information that we glean from the day, puts it together with what we've learned in the past, and tries to figure out how it all fits together. It's really easy to memorize information. It's really hard to understand what it's good for. And that's, in fact, what you and I both get paid for. Not the facts that we've memorized, but knowing how to use them.